Hallelujah. Hi, uh, this is uh, Andrew Sharif, and um, I'm happy to be with you. And uh, uh, today's teaching is called um, "How to Experience the Supernatural." So we're talking here about the supernatural power of God. Okay, how to experience the supernatural? So let's just pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we recognize that we need your Holy Spirit. Lord, we need the anointing of your of your Spirit to bring out the truth and the revelation and to understand, Lord, your word. So we pray for that anointing to be on me and upon all the listeners, Lord, so that we can uh, grow in your kingdom and, and really ex- learn how to experience your supernatural power. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Well, an honest, uh, this um, is in my uh, teaching, is in my July 2012 partner letter. So you just go to andrewshreve.org, click on Partner Letters, go to July 2012. You'll see the teaching there, How to Experience the Supernatural. You can read it and um, look at the references. and, and uh, It's a better, better way of uh, listening to the video by also uh, stopping the video, pausing, looking at the references, reading it. That way you get a double, a double way of learning rather than just um, listening to the video. So an honest reading of Scripture reveals that God has promised to His people a powerful, divine, supernatural experience. I mean, you know, there's a lot of as- lot of parts of the Christian church that don't have given up, basically. They've given up on the supernatural. They've given up on supernatural power. And they, they just do things in their own natural strength. And they have what they call the social gospel, which is just uh, helping the poor people. And that's, that's their Christian experience. But... If we're really looking at the Bible honestly and look at the life of Jesus, look at the ministry of Jesus, look at the ministry of, of, in the book of Acts, uh, look at the promises of God, look at the, the, the writings to the Christian church, uh, really a supernatural experience should be normal for us. And we should all desire to live a biblical form of Christianity and therefore we have to continue to strive and continue to look towards a uh, supernatural experience. So. Some of the scriptures that um, you know reinforce that it says in Ephesians 1, 18, 19, it says, "The eye, Paul prayed, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know." Goes on, the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe. So Paul's praying that the Ephesian church Christians, the under, their understanding being enlightened, that they might they might know the exceeding greatness exceeding greatness there's not a little bit of power of his power God's power toward us who believe and and these are people that are already born again so this is not talking about the born again experience this is talking about an experience of Christian living where we have an exceeding great experience of God's power and that word there is a Greek word dunamis which is means miraculous power according to the dictionary so you know, Paul is, is praying that the Ephesian Christians will have their understanding enlightened that they might have, they might know the exceeding greatness of God's miracle power towards the believer. So that, that's clear that they, we should have a, a miracle experience, a miraculous experience, a divine powerful experience as a normal Christian life. In Romans 1.16, Paul writes, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the dunamis, or the power of God, unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And so here again, we see that this word dunamis, this miracle power, it is the miracle power of God. That's what the gospel is, the gospel of Christ. It's miracle power. So if we're not experiencing miracle power, we're not really experiencing the gospel of Christ. And so a, a gospel devoid of miracle power is not a true gospel. And we need to look look at that, and we need to accept that. And 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 if we're not having a divine ex- miracle, miraculous experience, then we need to really look at what we're believing, and look at the scripture, and and expect more, and find out why we're not experiencing that. And this teaching is going to help you in that area. Um, it says that it is a miracle power of God unto salvation, and this word salvation has the meaning not just of eternal life but also of healing, supernatural healing, also of uh, having your needs met. You know, it's really similar to the Hebrew word shalom, which means that 
that our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual state is is good. It's well. It's you know. It's uh, we're not under uh, pain, sickness, disease, poverty, uh, fear, um, dangerous situation. All that is is relieved through God's supernatural power. And then in Second Peter one three, the scripture says, His or God's divine dunamis or divine power, miracle power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. In other words, God has already, it says has given, God has already given to us miracle power. Miracle power has been made available to the church for everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. So there's no lack of power from God's side. The power is already delivered. The weakness, if you like, or the the problem is on our side, not God's side. So if we're under the circumstances, we're under the sickness, under the disease, under the poverty, it's not because God doesn't love us and hasn't provided power to get us out of that situation. It's not like we're helpless. No, the gospel provides a solution to those, these, these problems. And, but we need to know how to access this power. So that's what we're going to try to... Uh, explain during this uh, teaching and I believe you will find it interesting and exciting and help your life. So the word translated power in each of these verses is a Greek word dunamis which means miracle power according to Strong's Dictionary. How then do we move from living as mere humans limited by natural law into a supernatural experience where God's miraculous power assists us in every realm of our lives? You see, it's easy just to give up on the miraculous and just live a normal Christ, a so-called normal Christian life or a, a Christian life devoid of supernatural power. It's easy to do that. You know? But that's not being that's not loving the word of God or loving God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. You know, it'd be easy for me just to just to not worry about the supernatural and just live like a normal person. But but that's not the truth. And so we need to live in the truth. And so we need to find out why we're not receiving this power and how to get it. Okay? So there are at least two ways that God's supernatural power is released. Okay? There's, there could be more, but there's at least two. One is where the gifts of the Holy Spirit inf- instantly manifest God's power. So a lot in Jesus' ministry and other men's ministries, you will see this miracle power released instantly through gifts of the Spirit. This occurs randomly. Not, it's not every single person gets, gets healing in, in, or miraculous assistance with these gifts of the Spirit. It occurs randomly through the ministry of a man or woman of God as the Holy Spirit wills. And so if you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you can see there very clearly, verses 8 to 11, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 11, it says... The man, verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit, and these are the various nine gifts, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings, healing rather by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work of the one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So these gifts of the Spirit as, are as the Spirit wills, not as the man wills, not as we will. Okay. So there is there is little predictability about these blessed gifts of the Spirit, as we cannot fully anticipate the thoughts, actions, selection, and timing of God. I'm, so, you know... Uh, if you've been to any of these sorts of meetings where there's m- miraculous things happen, not every single person gets healed. There are people that walk away from those meetings not healed. And so we don't know why sometimes a gift will operate and help one person and not another. But that's just the reality of it. Okay. Um, now, also, this, these gifts require a man or woman of God to be full of faith and and hear from the Spirit and walk with the Spirit. And so the person that needs the healing or whatever they need, they're fairly dependent really on that person operating in the gifts of the Spirit. And so 
uh, no humans perfect in their ministry. Jesus had a very powerful ministry. He he healed uh, healed them all. The Bible says in a lot of cases he didn't heal every single person in the whole of Israel, but he did heal a lot of people. And even in the early of early apostles, we see a lot of healings uh, occurring. And certain ministries in in our time and age, you know, have had many many miracles occurring. You know, uh, probably not as recently, but T.L. Osborne had a lot of miracles. Uh, I think Benny Hinn's probably had quite a few miracles happen in his meetings as well. And other people who we may not have heard of. But a more predictable, I want to talk about another way. There's a more predictable, yes, yet less spectacular way of receiving God's power, which is through faith, which is based on God's promises. Okay. So the scripture says in Romans 10:17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And Romans 6:12 says, says that through faith and patience we inherit the promises. So God has given us promises, and if we can get faith, we can receive those promises, which are 100% predictable because it's not dependent on a gift of the Spirit. It's simply just receiving the promise through faith. The, the key there is we have to get faith. So it's another way of receiving God's power. The foundation for receiving faith-based power is revelation knowledge of God's will, which is attained through diligent meditation of specific promises in God's word, which will bring faith, coupled with a right division of God's word. So this way of receiving God's power does require a little bit more effort and work, a lot more effort and work actually, because uh, you know if you just go to a meeting and you don't know much and you give to the Spirit, you didn't do anything. But with receiving God's power through faith, you need to actually first find the scripture, meditate the scripture, get faith in your heart, rightly divide the scripture. And there's a certain amount of spiritual warfare that goes on as well in the, in the, the holding on to your faith. You know, um, uh, you know, for example, you could be trying to believe for healing and the devil will attack you in that area and he might attack you and say, well, you don't deserve healing because you sinned in this area and then you need to also have an understanding of righteousness to realize that you do deserve the healing even though you have sinned because righteousness is God's gift to us. And so there's a certain amount of spiritual warfare and understanding the principles and other th- things in the kingdom of God to receive faith-based healing. So it's a little bit more complicated, if you like, than simple uh, gift of the Spirit. But nevertheless, it is more predictable because if you can get the faith in your heart, then you're guaranteed of getting the promise delivered unto you because God's not going to, God is not going to uh, change His mind. He, if He promises something, He's going to deliver it. And so the scriptures that we talk about there are, are 2 Peter 1, 2 to 4. 2 Peter 1, 2-4, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And the knowledge that he's talking about there is the promises. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge, again, of the promises that hath called us of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby given unto us, here it is, exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So, so there we see that the promises of God have been given for everything we need for life and godliness. Well, that would include financial provision. That would include healing from a terminal disease. Uh, you know, any, everything we need for life and godliness has a, the power's already been provided. In Second Timothy, chapter two. Second Timothy two. And verse fifteen, it says, "Study to show yourself." Approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, that implies that that we can wrongly divide the word of truth. And so, you know, that's why I'm saying that this particular method does require uh, does require more effort uh, than than just getting gift of the Holy Spirit. So, I think this teaching is going to take quite a long time. So, I think we'll do 20 minutes and then we'll. Uh, have to do part two, maybe even part three. So let's just go one more paragraph, okay? Sometimes Christians have limited their expectancy of receiving God's supernatural power to a mysterious instant occurrence which is beyond our control and understanding. In other words, 
you know, sometimes, and I was like this as a young Christian, I just thought, I didn't know, like, how's God's power? You know, it's like, whoa, something's going to happen. Maybe God's going to heal me. Maybe He's not. I don't know how the power's working. It's like mysterious and unknown. It's it's nothing to do with me. It's all about God, you know. This association is somewhat accurate when we consider receiving God's power through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? Because, you know, is God going to heal me or not? I don't know. Is the Spirit, the gift's going to come and heal me? Or is the gift going to come and deliver me? I don't know. So that's somewhat accurate when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit. However, we can expand our expectancy to receive God's supernatural power through faith in His promises. In other words, we can still have the gifts of the Spirit, but we can also add to that faith-based power. So we can add to the gifts of the Spirit, we can add now to what I'm talking about now is receiving God's power through faith in His promises. So we can add, it doesn't have to be either or, it can be both. Okay, so we can expand our expectancy. So, through faith in God, to receive God's power through faith in His promises. This process is more predictable, okay? It's more predictable because it's based on a promise that's already given, so you know God's will already. It's just a matter of us getting the faith to receive it. It's less mysterious, and it can be a gradually increasing release of power rather than an instant miracle. I mean, Jesus talks about how the kingdom works in Mark chapter 4, and He says, uh, verse 26, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. So that's the receiving of the promise, the receiving of the seed or the word in our heart. Then it says, And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring in and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. That gives us an idea of uh, progression. So in this way of receiving God's power, it may not be like, bang, totally healed. It might be a gradual healing. It might be a gradual financial improvement over months or or even years. So, not dissimilar to an apple tree gradually producing an apple harvest. Okay, So it's a different way. It's not the instant bang miracle by gift of the Spirit. This can be a gradual receiving of God's power through meditation of His Word, through receiving His Word daily, and then gradually that power can start to come flow into our life and bring about the manifestation or the change in our circumstances, in our healing, in our our personal lives, in our finances, in all sorts of areas of our life, whichever area we are planting the seed of God's Word. So in this teaching, I will elaborate on experiencing God's power through faith in His promises. Unlike the gifts of the Spirit, which are random and instantly bless the recipient, this way requires work and patience on behalf of the recipient. Okay, It requires work. Work and patience. So, First Corinthians uh, chapter three. Now, probably this not probably, maybe a lot of people aren't going to listen to this message because <laughs> it requires work and patience. It's not as spectacular. It's not a quick fix, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Okay. So, First Corinthians three nine says, "We are laborers together with God. You are God's husband, or you are God's garden or farm. You are God's building." So we are laborers together with God. So this way requires labor. Okay? It requires the receiving of God's word into our heart, the meditation of God's word, the receiving of seed. We have to plant the seed in our heart. We are God's garden. Our spirit must become the receiver. Our heart must become the receiver of God's word. Ephesians, uh, Hebrews 4.11 says, um, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. So there's a labor involved. Okay? If we understand the process of receiving God's power through faith, we can develop a reliable, ever-increasing stream of God's power into all aspects of our lives. This receiving of God's supernatural power through faith in His promises is fundamentally based on the principle of seed time and harvest. So that's, that's really important here, what I just said there. That we can receive, if we understand the principle, okay, we can receive an ever-increasing stream, a reliable stream of God's power into our lives. And so that's, that's what we want to talk about. So we're going to continue on in part two. Let me just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this introductory session here regarding how to receive supernatural power. Bless the people, Lord. I pray that you help them to realize that this is really important and that they can receive supernatural power into their life. Lord, and I pray that you will increase their expectancy. Let that anointing destroy any doubts they might have about the possibility of having a reliable stream 
of your power into their lives. So we pray, bless them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll come back on part two.